welcome back to another episode of Al Sol y Punto. So today's episode is going to be short and sweet, hopefully. Um, once again, this is a knitting podcast where I talk about natural dyeing, about plants, about my adventures in um, knitwear design and all of those things. And hopefully I can accompany you as you knit a few rounds or do the dishes or whatever you want to do while I'm speaking to you about my stuff. So today we're going to talk about um, the Christmas in July cowl knit along um, because it's really hot and really difficult to knit on those like heavy big sweaters so now is the perfect time to get ahead on your gift knits for the winter season or for December if you live in the southern hemisphere I don't know and what else will we talk about we'll talk about the Christmas advent of TTT which is really exciting we will talk about my lightning thigh goat pants, which I have finished. Okay, in the moment that I'm recording this, I've still got about that much left, but there will be clips later on where I've finished the pants and you can see them because they're awesome. And what else will we talk about? We'll talk about all of my knits that are on hold because I haven't really felt like knitting because of the heat. It's been like 110 degrees Fahrenheit like 45 degrees Celsius, very hot, not really knit weather, but I still knit. It's still a thing. We are, we are knitters all year long. Um, yeah. And we'll talk about some new projects, some Christmas and July cast-ons I've done, a really cool brioche pattern, and the plant of the day will be borage because borage is awesome in the summer, tastes like cucumber, and it's a beautiful little star. So, stay tuned. Okay, so Christmas in July, how to participate. Really, all you have to do is just start knitting something. Anything counts, whips, finished objects, um, even just ideas for knitting. If you make a post on it, this is an Instagram only, I mean, you could do it and not post anything and just join in, in the fun. You can comment down below if you don't want to use Instagram. But Ravelry, I didn't make a thread on Ravelry because I'm really bad at checking my Ravelry one day, maybe. But I don't really use it very often. Um, so, Christmas in July, Cal 2021. I will put the hashtag here. And so any post you make on Instagram, not in a story because that doesn't save. Well, I will save it in, in, if I if you tag me, I will repost it and then I will save it in one of my highlights. But any post that you make, like a regular post, and use the hashtag, that will count for a prize at the end of the month. And the prize will be a set of my stitch markers. And this time, I'm going to let the winner choose. So they can go into my Ko-Fi shop, which is, I think I haven't mentioned that, but now I have like some of my one-of-a-kind stitch markers that like I just make a set because I feel inspired and then put them on Ko-Fi. So not only can you find my stitch markers on Tintica.com, but you can also find them over on Ko-Fi. So the winner of this cowl will be able to pick whichever set they feel most attracted to. So that makes me happy because sometimes I'm not sure if the person is going to love the stitch markers that I send in all of my giveaways. So the winner gets stitch markers to participate. Just use the hashtag. You could use it as many times as you want. Finished objects, gift knits. Okay, so what are we knitting? We are knitting gifts. They could be gifts for yourself. So there's really, so anything kind of counts. Anything you knit in July basically counts because if it's for yourself or for someone else. But the idea is to start thinking about things to knit for our loved ones in December because I don't know about you, but in November, I start to get really stressed realizing that I have lots of knitworthy friends and family. So I wanted to have a box full of socks or hats or mitts or things that people could love. And so that's what I'm doing. I started making a cowl, which I hopefully can show you in the next clip finished because it's super easy super fast. This is a pattern by Beagle Knits. It's a free pattern. It's brioche. 
super easy. His pattern says for DK and I'm doing it with like a worsted and a DK which, because brioche is really fun if you mix weights. Um, and yeah, so that's going really quickly. And he has a video, he did this in like live videos. It was like a brioche class. And I actually followed the videos with him and just knit along while he was doing it. But the pattern is available in English and Spanish to download for free on Ravelry. So I'll leave the information down below for the Cuello Gades. And it's a really fun, easy brioche knit. And I think it's really pretty. Actually, it was Florencia. Hi, Florencia. I don't know if you watch this in English or Spanish. I think maybe English. Um, so hi. Uh, she mentioned in our Zoom knit night for the knit along, she mentioned that she was knitting these cowls as gifts. And I was like, that's a brilliant idea. And also I love Antonio. I think he's a fantastic designer. He is the designer who designed the Razón Poetica shawl, that huge, massive brioche shawl that I knit a few months ago. So yes. So that cowl I'm knitting and what else I have some socks on the needles so really anything goes any sweater any cowl any socks um, I was also thinking it would be cool to make like little birds of happiness I don't know if you've seen that pattern it's also a free pattern by a very cool designer oh we've got a car we've got a car we've got crickets are they crickets or like Spanish cicadas I don't know where they are, but it's a little bit noisy. Sorry, guys. Um, summer. Summer is just noisy and like a lot of energy, you know? It's hard to sit and knit with all of the summer energy. Um, yeah, so the Little Birds of Happiness I felt like is a really great stash buster if you've got just like little balls of yarn, little leftovers, and you can knit little ornaments. And that's a really fun gift for people or little stars, just like little ornament gifts is really fun for even people who probably wouldn't wear one of because I'm knitting this cowl and I'm thinking like I thought it would be for my aunt but I don't know if I can see her wearing it so now I don't know who it's gonna be for but that's okay the the owner will fi I will I will be inspired at some moment to to give it to someone I'm sure so you don't even need to know who these gift knits are for just start making them and you'll figure it out along the way but yes, Little Birds of Happiness is a cool idea or just little, little gifty things. And I was excited about like breaking into my deep stash because I've got a lot of like acrylic blend yarns, like colors that maybe I wouldn't wear myself. I don't know, maybe they're like bright colors or things that I'm not really attracted to, but to make ornaments or to make things like that, why not? So any of these can count, just use the hashtag and you will be entered to win a prize drawing at the end of the month. So, Christmas in July, do something now that is gonna make you really happy in November. Like in November, when you realize you have a box full of gifts, you're gonna be like, oh my God. Speaking of a really good like gift knit, my little lightning thigh goat pants, if you have any babies in the family, toddlers in the family, they're so cute. Even for yourself, I'm so excited. Last night when I was finishing up, it's so hot here. I thought, what am I gonna do with these pants now? I can't even like try them on, it's too hot. And then I thought, no, I'm gonna like hide them from myself. So as soon as it starts getting cold, I'm gonna be like, oh, my pants. And then I could take them out and wear them and it's gonna be so nice. So you can gift knit some pants for yourself. I don't know. So many things, so many things you could do with this, with this knit along. And yeah, so speaking of that, We've also got our TTT Advent, which if you haven't seen our posts about it or our um, live that we did in Spanish the other day um, on Instagram talking about the Advent, we are so excited. So TTT is Tintica and Time Talks, which is a little chat thing, video series that I do with my friend Tintica Aida who used to be my neighbor, but now lives in the north of Spain and in Barcelona. And so we meet every once in a while when we can, and we chat about natural dyeing, about knitting, about things together, and it's really fun. So we have been talking about collaborating on an advent for years. <laughs> I've been like really pushing it on her for a long time because I really wanted to prepare advents for people and I thought with her naturally dyed yarn and my stitch markers and other things, it would be really fun. And this year, 
is the year that she said yes. And so we are doing our TTT advent and actually now she's like almost more excited than I am. Like we're so excited. We talk about it literally every day about all the surprises and all of the extra things that we are going to include, but to understand the basics of the advent. So if you don't know what an advent is, this is a little gift that you can get for yourself or for your dear knitting friend, which we've had some people buy gift advents for other people, which is like the ultimate gift because you will receive your advent box in the middle end of November and for December 1st, you will have one gift every day to open whenever you want, in the morning as soon as you wake up, at night when you sit down with your knitting or whenever, and until the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, or I mean, you could organize it to finish on the solstice, opening up a few extras so you finish on the 21st, whatever holiday. I mean, you don't have to be religious to, to have an advent, but it's just extra joy in the month of December. And so every day you will open up a little gift which we'll have. So the advent includes eight of my stitch markers, which are like the ring stitch markers with the semi-precious stones. This year we'll be using, I don't want to tell too many, but definitely some agate and some, and some quartz. And I even have some opals and some other really beautiful, beautiful semi-precious stones, which just add so much joy to the knitting. Um, so eight of these ring stitch markers, eight of the clasp stitch markers, which work as progress keepers, or they work for crochet mm, stitch markers, or they just work as regular stitch markers. They're really versatile. So I like them as progress keepers, like to, to mark where you are in your, prog in your project and like make a note in your pattern, like this stitch marker means this part of the pattern and you can mark that. So eight of those, eight of the other stitch markers, six skeins of Tintica's Perpetual Base, which is her sock weight yarn, which is a beautiful sock weight yarn because it has 85% um, merino, 15% nylon, but it's very, very soft and it has a light super wash. It's really beautiful in her naturally dyed colors. Now these six skeins are mini skeins, but really not mini. They are actually half skeins because they're 50 grams. So 50 grams, 200 meters. And so in total, you're going to have 1200 meters and uh, 300 grams. So it's like having three skeins of fingering weight yarn but divide it into six colors and there will be pattern support or some ideas of what you can do with these skeins of yarn. So don't worry if you're like, what do I do? Well, first of all, on Ravelry, the possibilities are endless, but we've got you covered on that. So don't worry, but that's part of the surprise. Lots of surprises. Um, there will also be a naturally dyed tote bag. So Ida is dyeing up these beautiful, naturally dyed tote bags, which I'm obsessed with. I think they're so cool. We also have a new addition to the Time Weaver collection of awesome knitwear accessories. We have the Naturally Nourishing Knit Bar. What's that, you ask? I knew you'd ask. It's awesome. It is a solid hand cream bar made with shea butter, cocoa butter, vegetable wax, and vitamin E. So it is vegan, it's like super echo and organic, it is super nutritive and nourishing for the hands, and it is made by my lovely sister-in-law Alejandra. And so we've teamed up to make this awesome solid hand cream bar, which I just think is the perfect addition to like put in your, in your um, knit bag, your knit bag, <laughs> your project bag, where are my words, and like moisturize your hands before knitting and it smells so good and it's so pretty okay I think I don't know if I'm gonna put a picture here but it's 
so cool because the form of the bar, like the actual shape of the bar, you're gonna love it. Like, you're gonna love it. This is something that will be available for purchase maybe in like October, November, but it's gonna be part of the advent, so don't worry, you'll get it. Um, and it comes in a really cool um, tin, which can be used later to keep your stitch markers when you use up all your solid hand cream. Although this solid hand cream, I think if you use it every day, you it would last like at least six months because it's it's a solid, solid hand cream bar. But it's adorable and awesome and so nice for your hands. It smells so good. So that's the advent. And then all lots of other surprises plus community because we're going to do a um, beginning of the month zoom to like meet everyone and get excited together about like opening up all our gifts and talk about like where we put set it up in our house and everything and it's going to be bilingual because we've already got some people who are from the states and I assume that they don't speak Spanish so the advent is bilingual this year and all years because why not we're we're a bilingual group and I'm super excited about that and I'm so excited about like people who have gotten excited about it. Oh, and there's a special discount for the month of July. So if you want your advent, I mean, we'll probably be selling them. I'm not sure when we will run out, but for now, the special discount is on for the month of July. So you can find it on tintica.com or actually on my Ko-Fi site, but probably better on tintica.com. And yes. So we're excited about that. So start knitting, start preparing stuff, get yourself ready for December. I know it's crazy to think about December in July, but if we do these things now, like buy ourselves an advent, or buy our best friend, our best knit friend an advent, or start knitting that pair of socks for your mom, like we're gonna feel really awesome in December. So let's do things today that will make us feel good tomorrow. Okay. More things. So I'm finished. Okay, this floppy ribbon, I don't know, it's very floppy, so we have to see what we'll do with that. But they're done. Oh my god. I loved this knitting project and I love this yarn so hi different day different time different place and I hope that the sounds of the cicadas are not too intense I tried to choose a place that is a little bit calmer I don't know if you know I don't know if you're from the states you might know about the cicada Thing, event that happened this year because apparently the species of cicadas that live on the east coast of the United States only come out of the ground like to mate every 17 years or 12 years 17 years and this was the year and so this sound which you could probably hear here was going on in the States for like a month here in Spain we have a different species which make this noise all the time <laughs> So it's cicada season every year. But anyway, here I am with my lightning thigh goat pants and they're finished. I'm so excited. The pattern is written up in Spanish. I need to translate it over to English. Um, so if anyone wants to test out the pattern in English, let me know. Um, this is for the knit three words challenge, which was explained in one of my previous videos but basically we had to knit something it's a, ch a knitting challenge here in Spain and we had to knit something based on three words that were pulled out of a hat at the beginning of the year and the three words were mythology was chosen fauno which is like a fawn so clearly goat pants um, the meteorology was lightning and the ways to dye yarn was solid. So I have my solid color lightning thigh goat pants. So you might ask lightning thigh goat pants. Well, if you're a native English speaker, you will know the phrase thunder thighs. 
And that's what came to my mind when I was imagining goat pants with like fringe all over and like fuzzy goat pants. I was like, that's not gonna be flattering. And then I thought, thunder thighs, no. I'll make lightning thigh goat pants. So these are my lightning thigh goat pants. The pattern is super simple. Um, it is uh, knit this and double and then fold it over. I did like a, a pearl bump here where you fold it over. And then I put like two buttonholes or like holes here to string the ribbon through. But because when I tried them on, like the ribbon, it like went up here. So what I did was because this yarn is so floopy and you can kind of just make holes in it, I just made extra holes on the inside with a darning needle. I don't know if you can see, but I put holes on the inside here and a hole on the inside here so that I can thread through so that the lace, lace ribbon will stay like in the center of the band. And I'm gonna try them on now for you guys, but they're done. And you just do some short rows back here, some increases here, put one leg on hold, keep knitting down. Super easy zoom knitting because you're just knitting, 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 knitting until you do a super decrease in the baby version of this, because I also made a baby version <laughs> as like a, as a swatch. Um, I only did knit two together, but here I did like knit three together because I wanted like a really drastic decrease. And then this stretches and it's cozy around the ankle. So those are them. Aren't you proud? I'm so proud. <laughs> so happy they're done. And super done before the deadline. Good job, Nicole. These are supposed to be, well, and now I need them tested. So if anyone wants to test the adult size, please. And again, this is the most amazing yarn, which is super light. Ah, I weighed them. Do you know how much they weigh? 425 grams. It's like nothing. So what is that? Oh man, math on camera. Uh, 10, 10, 10 skeins. 10 skeins of Snefnug from Camaros and it's super light it's super awesome I love I love this this yarn you can see how fuzzy it is it's got oso hairs in it already but that's okay okay so more things Well, now that I'm absolutely sweating, <laughs> um, let's try on some more knitwear in a heat wave. <laughs> so, um, I was like so hot last week that I couldn't even knit on my lightning thigh goat pants. So I needed like a small project and my socks were at a point where I needed to make a decision about adding yarn or I don't know. I just had projects on a standstill, so I said, I need to cast on a Christmas in July project, obviously. And Florencia, um, a friend gave, I think I talked about this in the intro, but Cuello Gades, the Gades cowl of Antonio of Beagle Knits, finished in like two days. Isn't that so cool? I love it. It's super easy if you don't know brioche I highly recommend this pattern um, I mean he does like a video tutorial live in Italian and Spanish so it might be kind of boring if you don't know Spanish or Italian because it's kind of long like I would do the step that he says in the video and then I would like knit on something else and then do the step he said in the video um, and then I just once I did the first repeat I was like oh I could do this so then I did the rest. Actually, it starts here. So it's super easy, the pattern. This yarn, 
I'm pretty sure the pink um, was, well, this like salmon color is a merino blend, which I hope I can put over here the information. I'm pretty sure my friend Marianela gave it to me. And the inside, or the other side, honestly, it is brioche and reversible. How cool is it on this side? It's funny when you do Christmas in July because like you knit bright summer colors, but those are nice in at the winter solstice to have bright sunny summer colors. But yeah, so and the inside is an acrylic yarn. This is a yarn I think by DMC that actually won at um, a Worldwide Knit in Public Day. <laughs> there was this challenge where we had to like hold a spoon in our mouth and a ball of yarn and like run. And I won. I think we had to be knitting too. We had to be knitting, holding a spoon in our mouths with a ball of yarn and run across the street and I was the fastest. I didn't really have a lot of competition. It was a lot of grandmas <laughs> competing with me. But anyway, so I won a whole bag full of yarn and I have all this yarn and I'm like, I need to use it. So I made a brioche cowl. Isn't it awesome? Okay, I'll try it on. Although, very hot. Isn't that cute? Okay, I have to say that I love my Cuello Salteña pattern because it's like tighter at the top and then it grows and I really like that style of cowl. But again, this is a gift knit and so I started knitting this for no one in particular but I kind of was thinking about my aunt and then by the time I finished I know it's for my aunt. So you can do that too. You could just start a project not know exactly who it's going to be for and then probably by the end of it you'll know and if not you will know at some point so yeah this is for my aunt although i really like it i think i can make one for myself too i'm going to cast on my cuello salteña like tomorrow i'm balling up my um, mohair silk from cat which is the into the summer colorway which is the song by incubus and i don't know if you guys know me i was obsessed with Incubus when I was in high school. And I don't think I've told this story on here, but I'll tell it really quickly. Magically, one day I went into Manhattan. I, I grew up like outside of the city and my dad worked for the trains, maybe too much information. So I had like a pass to go into the city for free. So I would always go on the train into the city. And one day I went with my friend and we're like, I bet today we're gonna see someone famous. We were like 16. Cause you would always see famous people in Manhattan. And walking down the street, we saw Brandon Boyd, who is the lead singer of Incubus. And at that time, I was obsessed with Incubus. And like in those like little things, like 100 question things you would fill out on MySpace, it would be like, if you could meet one famous person, who would it be? My answer was always Brandon Boyd, Brandon Boyd. And we saw him and I freaked out. I don't remember why I'm telling this story. <laughs> uh, Into the Summer is the name of a song by Incubus. That's the colorway of the yarn that I'm going to knit into my cuello salteña. Anyway, it's the cicadas and the heat and this cowl in this temperature. No, but it's so nice. I'll keep it here. Um, and yeah, so I met Brandon Boyd <laughs> and I went up to him and I was like, hi, excuse me, are you Brandon Boyd? I knew it was Brandon Boyd. He's like, yes, I am. I was like, you're, you're my favorite. And that was it. And then I said, can I take a picture with you? And I wish I could find that picture because this teenage Nicole, really dorky with Brandon Boyd. I mean, I'm still dorky, but yeah. So I'm going to cast on a Cuello Salteña for myself, but I've got one gift knit done. Actually, this is number two because I finished a pair of socks for my other aunt. So we've got two gift knits and I highly recommend this pattern. Super easy. And don't, doesn't it look cool the way it does that thing there? I'm gonna make more of these. I'm gonna make these for the whole family with all the, the yarn I have in my stash. Brioche for the win. I love brioche. I love brioche. And if you don't know brioche, you should try it. This cowl is a great pattern to learn. Highly recommend. Okay, before I go, I just wanted to say that, well, thanks for watching. Now it's the plant segment. And I wanted to tell you that you should really cast something on for Christmas in July. It's such a nice feeling to know that I already have a gift. I already have a gift and I need to make more, but I feel like the momentum. So we're going to make all the gifts and we're going to be so proud of ourselves 
in December when we get to give our family all these gift nets. And they're going to be like, wow, you knit this for me. And you're going to be like, yeah, I did it in July. And they're going to be like, you're so responsible. That's the idea. Okay. Manga. Plant time. So today's plant is borage. And I... It's also known as star flower. And it's funny because... I had always like noticed this plant around Granada maybe in the springtime here we have the, um, the beautiful like bluish purpley star flowers and I always thought it was really interesting and recently I went to a, a market <laughs> Uh, like an outdoor market that happens only once a month and I always go because sometimes they have a vendor who sells plants like potted plants and I have found like Artemisa there or I'm always on the lookout for motherwort Leonardus cardiaca but for some reason this plant escapes me here in the south of Spain probably because my mother is on the other side of the ocean hmm just thought of that I don't know but motherwort so I'm always looking for that plant but anyway I went to the market and I asked um, what plants they had and they only had two and they had basil and they had borage and I thought what is borage and the woman actually was an American and she started to speak to me in English and she said you don't know what borage is Americans never go out into the countryside and they don't know their plants and I was like I know we don't and she told me she was from Nebraska and that, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so I brought the borage home with me. And I also remembered that in the beautiful book that Kat of Heather and Hop sent to me of all the herbal and botanical drinks, there were all these recipes for using borage. So those of you who don't know borage, <laughs> like I really didn't know borage very well, um, Borrago Officinales is the name and actually it's a cousin of comfrey and you can tell because the leaves are really prickly actually if you try to brush dirt off of them like I did when I was repotting it I like it like cut me <laughs> this porridge plant um, but it is native to the Mediterranean but it's cultivated throughout the world and has these beautiful little blue star flowers and the bees absolutely love it. Apparently the flowers bloom very late in the summer and early in the fall. And they're the last flowers that bees like work on. And so they make, it makes a really delicious honey bees that um, are with borage. I, I've never tried it, but it could be interesting. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the leaves are really prickly and they make a really cool, refreshing juice or cold infusion. Um, when picked early in the summer and it tastes like cucumber <laughs> it really does like if you eat the leaves they taste like cucumber or if you make a cold infusion like I did it tastes like cucumber water and it's really nice um, and the flowers are also perfectly edible you can use them to make a cold infusion as well or to decorate drinks and apparently it is a plant that is very restorative to the heart and to the lungs and if you have been ill or need some kind of strength after a stressful time, borage is a great ally. Delicious and crisp and cooling. And apparently the borage seeds are used to make oil for like your skin and your hair. Um, and also it's an amazing plant to plant with fruiting crops because, of, because it brings all of the bees. And if it's anything like comfrey, if you've seen my last episode, I think it was, that I talked all about comfrey, um, all of the properties that comfrey has, I'm sure borage has got some of them if they're cousins. And yeah, it's just really delicious, refreshing, and beautiful for a summer beverage. So go find your borage. Okay. Ciao.